Margaret Spence, the evil genius from Winter Laboratory with your lab secrets tip of the day. Well, this is one of several tutorial videos that we're going to make in order to help you, our customers, figure out some of the ways and means to get around the back end of your new lab secret solution. We had some questions sent in today from one of our new customers who set up a site called modelun.com. And the questions are pretty straightforward and they also have relevance to the rest of our customers. So we're making a little video today to kind of run through them. Let's just jump right into it. First of all, the, the question number one is how do I change the first page layout? Well, let's start out all of our tutorials by saying there's a front end of the site and a back end of the site. Over here, I'm on the front end. The way that you always log in to get to the back end is to use the slash WP admin. Let's start out by adding WP admin, and that'll take us to the admin dashboard. Now, the way we prefer to set things up is to have two pages open, and they can be in different tabs or they can be in different windows. In order to get two windows open, you can go ahead to your title here on the left side, and you can right click on it and say open link and new tab. The result is you'll have one window for the dashboard and a second window for the front end. That works for most people, but as I say, you can also have two separate windows. Now, next thing is, let's go to see about where the displays are for setting the front page. And that's over here under the admin dashboard menu under settings. When you go there, you'll find something under the category of reading. Now, what reading allows you to do is to basically choose what the front page displays. Now, there's a lot of other things I'm going to explain in a, a more detailed tutorial video, but for today, just to answer the question, if you start out with the default setting of your latest posts, the thing that will be always displayed at the front will be your blog posts. So I go back to the site and I reload, and here in the root, you'll see that that now puts the blog posts on the front. We don't really have any blog posts in here because this is just being set up, but the idea is that that is the default setting. Now let's change it around a bit. If I change it instead to say I want a static page to be my front page, I can choose from any of the previously created pages in order to fill that spot. Now for example, if I wanted to say join us, which is a page that we set up, and I'll show you how, I would select that for the front page, and then for the posts page, I would say which of these other pages contain my blog. So I'll click save and then I'll go back and explain how that all works. When I refresh, you'll see that now at the root of the site, we have the join us page. Now this is just some filler content. I want to show you how we create these pages so you understand what it is that we're putting there. If you go over to the left side of our admin dashboard again, you click on pages. This is where that type of content is always created. By default, you have two types of content that's created, probably three if you want to count links. You have pages, you have posts, and then you have links. Now links is something you may or may not use and it allows you to create a blog role or a favorite list of resources that you and your other site members can utilize. But for the sake of argument, let's say the two main content types are posts and pages. Pages think of more static in nature. Like an encyclopedia, posts are more like a newspaper. They come out every day. Now it's not really a hard and fast rule, but that's a good way to think of it. So if we go over to pages, we can see which pages have already been created by clicking on pages. And we can see we've got several here about blog, IDA, join us, sample, premium content, etc. Let's look at the welcome page and see here what we did. It's got a WYSIWYG editor available. There's two tabs on the page that you can utilize. You can utilize visual or HTML. Now they're both handy for various reasons, but I'll explain in another tutorial why you would use one over the other. If you don't have any experience with HTML, you can stick with the visual. Second of all, to make your life a little easier, there's a dragging and dropping window, or I should say an expansion handle. If you grab it, you can open up the window a little bit and get a little more breathing room so that you can see your content. Now, we didn't really put a lot in here. We put a sample image in and a couple headers, and we styled that using some HTML and CSS. But if you don't know any of that stuff, and you're really a beginner, don't worry. You could just type right in here because this is the WYSIWYG editor. Now, there's some other additional features in here if you are a beginner to help you out, and it's stuff that would normally be available in the tiny MCE editor, which you've probably used on a variety of websites before. All right, so now that we've created this particular page, we can go ahead and we have a couple other options before we leave. First of all, we can name it whatever we want to name it. And it doesn't matter if you use exclamation points or other strange characters, because anything that isn't allowed will be stripped out of there by default. You'll notice too that we've got a permalink. Now this means the link that people would browse to in their browser. But see this area here that's highlighted in yellow? What you can do is edit that and customize it. 
Even though this will be generated automatically from whatever you type in the initial title, if you don't like the outcome of it, you can go ahead and edit it and make it whatever you wish. I could say something like welcome home page. As long as it doesn't have a conflict with an existing permalink, you can go ahead and click OK and it'll be saved. Now I like the title to be simple and it's more memorable to type in slash welcome, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now, next I've got the ability to insert media and some other things, which I'm going to talk about in another presentation. But just by clicking here, you can go ahead and add an image to your post. You can do the same from either your computer, or you can take it from an existing library that you've already created by previously uploading it. These things will go into detail with another tutorial, but suffice it to say, once you've built up a media library, you can really use it again and again. All right, you've got some other features and options here again. You can allow comments, allow trackbacks. Those don't really need to happen in a page because people don't typically allow comments on a static uh, page, much like you don't really have comments on an encyclopedia, but you do have letters to the editor in a newspaper. So returning back to where we were, remember we were under settings and reading. And so in this case, I'm going to say I want the front page to be welcome. And now the posts page. What this means is that if you don't have your front page being your latest posts, you can create a blank page and call it anything you want. And what happens is it knows intuitively, WordPress knows intuitively by the name that you use that that's the tab to put your blog posts on. So it sort of acts more or less like a filler page and it allows you to have a tab with that name on it, but there's really no content in there other than the fact that it will be used as a placeholder for your blog content. So we created a page and called it blog and it's blank other than the title and that's what we're going to use for the blog posts. Click Save Changes and now let's see the change in our layout. When we reload, the welcome page should be our home page and it is. Now the cool thing about this is you can use this for a variety of different reasons in addition to just the basic what's your front page. You could do A-B testing if you have different designs and layouts. You can utilize it to make sure that for example you test one design front page versus another and yet you don't have to continually worry about rewriting it. You could just set those up to be rotating. Now let's go over to our menu. Now, in this case with WordPress, you can control the location and the number of any menus you want, but we have our central navigation, and you'll find that under Appearance, Menus. Once you're there, you can see that we've got choices to have as many menus as we want. If we wanted to add a new menu, you click on the plus sign. In this case, I've created three menus, a community menu, a logged in menu, and a logged out menu. The difference for the logged in and logged out is I want in this site to be able to designate whether a menu should be visible to somebody who is logged in and have a different menu for somebody who is logged out, maybe a public member. I also want a custom menu that goes in that pull out sidebar that's only my community tabs and those would be the things, for example, that come from our social network, activity, members, groups, forums, photos, videos. Now, what I'm going to do here is show you that if I was to go to my logged in menu, and I wanted to add that welcome, well, I can see it's right here already, so let me go through it with you and I'm gonna remove it. I could just go ahead and say, this was a page. So on the left-hand side, I have the ability to find the existing pages. And all I would need to do is click on welcome, add to menu, and it would automatically add it in there. Now I grab it with my left mouse button and I can drag it into any position I want. If I wanna tweak it, I can go ahead and tweak the title here. For example, maybe I want to remove that exclamation point. No problem, I just hit the back arrow. Next, I can also add a title attribute. What's this attribute do? Well, this is the rollover. So if I wanted it to say a message to someone when they come to that, if they roll over with this, I can send them a message. This is the welcome page. Go ahead and save the menu. Very important to hit this big blue button. When I come over here, you notice, first of all, how the exclamation point disappeared. And when I roll my mouse over, hey, there's the title attribute. This is the welcome page. There'll be more tutorials like this in our Lab Secrets Support Center at support.labsecrets.com, or you can find it right here at the main website at labsecrets.com. The suspense, the evil genius from Widget Laboratory.